All right. You dude, Hot Wobble is here. All right. And today, I'm going to talk about, where is it? Uh, this plugin, the Brainworks Refinement plugin. I just got this. It's super cool. I'm just going to go over how to use it, why you need it, and demo it in, in one of my tracks, like why I was even reaching for this, right? So the plugin is called Brainworks Refinement Harshness Control, right? Um, and I'm, I'm doing like two things right now to control some harshness, right? Uh, basically, what this is talking about is sometimes you get like, or a lot of times, it's pretty easy to do, you get like resonant frequencies that build up, right? And and they, they get harsh, particularly in the range of about 2K to 5K, because your hearing is more sensitive in that range, right? And there's also a lot of elements of tracks that tend to have information in that area, right? So you kind of get this perfect storm sometimes where it's like, You'll you hear resonances, or it'll just be like bright and harsh. And if you EQ the the high shelf down, it doesn't sound as harsh, but then it sounds dull, right? And and it's like too dark. So, but you raise it up again, and then it's like kind of grating on you again. So, um, anyway, I I was really reckoning with this um, right now. I'll play you the sound with none of these plugins on it, just so you can hear what I'm talking about, right? Uh, so here's the track. Alright, oh wait, let me get rid of the, yeah, the CQ2. It's, it's a couple octaves higher, but you hear that, that pitch right there? Like, it's like really, really up there. It's like a whistle almost, right? Um, yeah, that, what you just heard, right? Um, I hear a bunch of resonance, so um, I, we're getting into other techniques, right? But... Um, yeah, so I did the typical thing. I should just do a video about this too, about like notch EQing, like because not everybody knows about this. But so I, I took some out, you know, through this, but that didn't quite get everything. You can still hear it there, right? Um, so that's where this plugin comes in, right? Um, so basically, what you're gonna do, right? It's got a couple controls. Um, it's got this little tube interface. So first, you have this dampening kind of master knob. What this is going to do is control um, the set point, so the amount of, of fixed dampening that happens to those high frequencies, right? And the soft or hard switch um, controls kind of the, the algorithm or the, um, like, what order of harmonics that it's, it's going to be clamping down on, right, to, to de-harsh this signal. Right. Um, so let's see. I have this. Oh, we'll turn this off for now. We'll get into each setting. Right. Um, so right now we're at minus 4.08. So let's just listen as we bring this up. So that's kind of the sweet spot where I liked it. But if we go all the way, listen. Here, the tube starts to glow. That's cool. That's a little too dark, though. It's too much dampening, right? Let's go back here. Sounds good, right? Um, maybe I was even... I should rock a little heavier. I'm still working on this track, by the way, so um, I'll, I'll play a little bit of it as we go. Um, anyway, this solo filter is cool because it lets you hear what this thing is actually taking out. So let's just listen to the crap. Hear that whistle again? Whatever that pitch is, but just higher, right? It's, it's pulling that junk out of it, right? Um, so let's go back to the main listening mode. Let's leave it around five-ish. OB. Oh yeah, big difference. Yeah, much more mellow, which is what we want. That combined with this notch filter is starting to get us in the neighborhood, right? There's a couple other features, right? Um, mix knob, obviously that's cool. You can, you know, do like a parallel thing with this guy right in the plug-in, like, so if you only want a little of the effect and some of the original signal, you can season the taste. Um, then we have this mid-side control. Um, I think it sounds better on mid-side right now. Yeah, yeah, so basically mid only applies this effect to the middle. This is one of the things I love about Brainworks plugins. They all have mid-side capability, um, whereas if you leave it on mid-side, it's controlling the information that's common in the two speakers as well as um, the information that's discrete to each each channel left and right. So anyway, there's that. Um, then we have the saturation control, 
um, which is like a, 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 tone, a subtle kind of distortion, tonal shaping thing. And then your presence knob, um, which is just like a high shelf boost. Um, on this one, I, I was messing around with it for what I'm trying to do, which is basically glue together this synth part with two other ones to make a big, warbly, swirly, beautiful texture, right? Um, so for that purpose, these did not suit my taste. I ended up boosting some some highs again after all this, uh, just to kind of shape the tonality with this mag EQ, which is deserving of its own review and tutorial or whatever, because this thing is sick, sick, sick. I love, this is my favorite EQ I bought all year, right? Um, but so anyway, moving on with it, right? Uh, we have the dynamics control, right? Which this I had enabled. This is nice. Um, basically, what this lets you do is it it it's going to react to the dynamics, right? Kind of, I guess, like um, not exactly like a dynamic EQ or a multiband, but but my understanding of it from reading the manual is you you set your fixed point here, and then um, depending on what happens in the dynamic response, it's going to add to that, right? Beyond what your fixed point already is. You have a speed control. This wasn't super intuitive. Like how to figure it out. Like if you set it at zero, it's going to be really slow. Like watch. It's like not really doing anything. Let me, let me increase the this. Oh, wrong way. Yeah, there we go. Right? I'm kind of explaining what this does. So basically, if you increase the range, it's going to be more sensitive, right? And as you turn the speed up, it's going to react faster. Like if we go zero, see how it's super slow? Now we turn it up. Now it's quick, snappy, right? Um, let me just go back a couple steps to where I had it. Yeah, so I had it um, yeah, around 10 dB as fast as it can go. Um, the reason I'm setting it fast here is because it's super high. There's lots of stuff that comes in and out, you know. Um, so I, I want that to be able to grab all that really quickly. If, if some little harsh, cruddy thing jumps in and jumps out, I want it to, to be all over it. Um, and finally, we have an oscillator section, um, which basically is going to oscillate this, this master dampening control on top of all this other stuff, right? Uh, like you see the tube kind of warbling, right? Um, it's a cool interface. So yeah, it's, it's going to let you do that, right? And there's two modes, right? You can either use sync, which is going to, as you can see here, it's going to sync to the speed of your DAW, right? So like if I put it to quarter notes, I'm gonna, I, I got to demo this. This is kind of cool, actually. I might use this instead of the dynamic control. Let's see what blends better. Um, but yeah, so I guess you, it, it tops out at quarter notes. Uh, I guess that, that is what it is, right? Um, if you don't want to deal with the sync thing. Oh, this is a cool feature, too, by the way. Um, if you click in here and drag, you can play around with the phase of the oscillator. So, okay, cool. Um, let's start it out here. All right, versus this. I think I like that better. I like it. It's kind of coming in on the upbeat because it's, it's supposed to sit with like a house thing. Versus, wait, let's, let's start here. <laughs> Subtle, I like this one better. Um, anyway, cool. So if you don't want to time it, if you want it to be out of time for whatever reason and be a little more subtle, right? Um, you can put it to free, and then this is just going to let you do it uh, based on just raw time, right? This could be whatever. So maybe something like this, I would maybe set to be kind of slow to, to fit in with this whole like wavy, swirly whirly kind of thing I'm trying to do. Um, and then turn the depth up to where it sounds okay. I like the time one better in this situation. I think it just sounds better. Um, so yeah, that that's that's did I hit every button? That's about it, right? Um, got this, got this, right? Got this. You can't really do anything in here. That's basically the overview of all the controls and how to use them. Um, and then if you want to hear how this is sitting in the context of this whole tune, we can, we can hear it drop in, right? Um, oh, whoops. Um, so yeah, I'm trying to blend this together into a group of, of synth stuff. So we have this part, right? So that's kind of an in and out, right? Kind of a slow attack thing, it's swelly. 
Then this is a more constant string part. Or st strings, whatever. Um, synth strings. And then, uh, then we have this that kind of comes in and out. Right? And then the way I'm, I'm gluing all this together is kind of a side chaining. Um, this, since this is more dynamic, I'm, I'm setting it up to get out of the way. But anyway, um, it's supposed to be at the plug in. I'm, I'm getting in the weeds here. Um, so here is, I'll play the difference A and B, with and without, and the whole mix. You get a difference? Maybe a bit much even, I might pull this back further and switch it back to dynamics. I think that sounded better. Here. So yeah, that, that's just kind of like some live action here, how I would use this. This is not like a final mix at all. I'm still writing this track, actually. Um, but this is just how I would go go about dialing this in in the context of my rough mix. Um, just get something that's kind of sitting right. Um, like you can see, my first reactions were to, you know, actually dampen less when I was soloed, which, you know, it's not good to, to solo too much. You want to hear how everything's working together. Um, yeah, but so this is, you know, I, I pulled this back and I even put in some of the original signal. It was getting too dark because um, how I want this to sit, it's got to be that swirly glued together thing. But this component should be sitting kind of on top and moving around. Um, you Putting the auto pan to help, you know, just bring some motion in and not, um, you know, not get too grating. I hate it when there's like too much bright stuff kind of in both sides all at once. So putting a little motion in there is nice. So, but anyway, this isn't a, that's supposed to be a mixing video, but... Uh, it is good to see the plug-in kind of in the heat of the moment, right? So anyway, there you have it. Hot Wobble. This is a new track. I'm trying to get it out before the end of the year. Fingers crossed, right? Crazy time, December. Um, like, subscribe. It's YouTube. You know what to do. You know how to use it. Peace.